Uh, this morning at 8.30, we did our first session ever, and we had a lot of great participation. In fact, I would say it was a success for one reason. People showed up and they shared their ideas. I want to introduce my co-host. David Gonzalez, Deputy Executive Director of TDLR. David, it's good to have you here. So here, here's the deal. We had about 189 folks uh, participate this morning, and we had great ideas, great information. Uh, the first time we're doing the virtual strategic planning session is obvious. We're in the middle of COVID. We're trying to make sure that, that we can still have the contact and the connection, but all of us are making adjustments in our lives, whether it's personal or professional. I mean, we know how devastating this has already been for our licensees, those that are self-employed, like our cosmetologists and our massage therapists and, and our barbers and individuals such as that, that you've been impacted directly, in, and we feel your pain on that. Uh, but we still wanted to make sure that we could get together today because, y'all, we're going to make it out of this thing. We're going to make it out of this, and what are we going to do the day after? When we get out of this process, that's what today's about. Still planning for the future, knowing that things are going to turn around, and we want to make sure that TDLR is positioned and ready to take advantage of that and serve you better than we've ever served you before. So we'll start off, David, I think, with um, instructions on how people can participate. Sounds good. So you can participate by downloading the Poll Everywhere app directly to your phone. I believe that's the easiest, whether it's iPhone or Android. It's a free application. But How it's much does it cost? Zero. Zero dollars. Free, free 99. Free 99. So whether it's uh, polleverywhere.com is where you would go, and you can download the app. You also have the option, option two, which is if you're in your web browser already watching this live streaming, you can just type into your web browser, pollev.com slash TDLR2020. By doing that, it should bring up the prompt where you can enter your name or you can skip over it to remain anonymous. So a screen name would say you're representing a particular association and you want to be known for the, the points that you're bringing up, you put in the name. But if you just want to skip and remain anonymous, you hit skip and it's going to ask you for a TDLR 2020 uh, username to, to log into our first Poll Everywhere uh, question set. This is an important process. We've been using this internally and in fact, you know, if, if you've been, raise your hand if you've participated in TDLR strategic planning process before. Okay, I actually don't see anybody's hands, but in the past, we've always done it through Facebook. We put questions on Twitter, and then we went around the state meeting with y'all face to face. Because of COVID-19, we're doing it virtually. We, we can't have the same contact, I know that, because uh, y'all know I'm a big hugger if you've ever met me. I love to hug folks, and I love to be close, but we didn't want to lose the intimacy of having a conversation, a back and forth. So Poll Everywhere is going to allow you to, to engage with us, to tell us what you're thinking, uh, what's on your mind, what you would do differently if you were in our shoes. Uh, this is such an important conversation. You know TDLR takes this process serious. We have used this information in the past to make changes to improve the way we regulate, to, to deregulate certain rules and certain statutory provisions that made it easier for you to do your business. Uh, so we want to make sure that we get that same type of uh, input, impact today. So I guess we'll go to the next slide. What do we have, Carnesia? Oh, brainstorming rules. We'll let David start and tell you a little bit about the brainstorming rules. Brainstorming is, the rules are so important to our process because we're trying to build on the ideas that are presented to us. If you want to get ideas up on the board, you can't be sitting in judgment of everybody's idea. If you have a contrary idea, offer the contrary, but we don't want to be saying that's a dumb idea, that was tried 10 years ago, that's old stuff, we don't need that anymore. You just want to put the proposal that's contrary to up there. So all ideas will be recorded. If you get an idea up there, it's going to be on the board because you're typing it in and we're not going to be filtering it. It's going to be straight up there. No idea is ridiculous. No judgments. This is a f safe zone for ideas. Build on one each other's ideas. That's the part that's probably most important in this process. Everybody's going to come with their ideas, but if you have an idea you put out there and someone else wasn't thinking about it, they may be able to piggyback and even elaborate a little bit more so it makes it a better idea than what we started with. Lastly, we're going to generate as many ideas as possible. So some of you may have came back uh, from this morning's session and joined us again, and I'm glad to have you. Hopefully there's some new folks participating as well. But the brainstorming rules are so critical, y'all, because I guarantee you, Somebody's going to say something you don't agree with. Somebody may say, oh, we need to increase the cosmetology hours to 3,000 hours and make, make them take 10 years worth of examinations. And somebody just simply comes back and says, no, I don't think that we should do that. I think we should do X, Y, and Z. Providing those contrary positions are important for us to really get a context 
of how we can move forward. So really avail yourselves. Uh, there's no idea that's ridiculous. There's no judgment. Uh, we want to have as many ideas as possible. This is your turn to talk to us and tell us what you think and what you would do differently and how we handle the business. So who we are. As we go through this, this COVID moment, as I call it, um, I'm a husband. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I have fears about what's happening. I worry about my mother and father in this small town. I'm keeping track of the number of, of cases in their community. I want them to be safe. These things are, are present in my mind. They're present in our staff's mind, just like you're dealing with them. We're all dealing with this thing at the same time with the same level of information. In fact, you can kind of catch yourself looking at it like it's the stock market, like how many cases, how many deaths are taking place. It can be daunting. So I wanted to put this up here to remind us I also have the role of being the executive director of this agency. And, and, and in that role, I have to be reminded that my mission, our mission, is to earn your trust of Texans every day. And that's by having these type of events. That's by being responsive to areas that we can improve and become better in. This is our opportunity to gather that, that information that will assist us in achieving our mission. Also, the vision of our agency to be the best, period. To be the best at navigating this COVID moment. To be the best at helping folks get back on their feet when it's over. To be the best at creating next practices. The, the question about what you would do over the next five years or what you think is going to happen in the next five years, that's where we develop the next practices from. Your ideas that you share with us, delivering low-cost licensing. We had some great ideas come out of the, the session this morning, and, and I fully expect that we'll have the same thing here. And also remembering to hold tight, hold fast to the core values of our agency. It's being accountable. It's having customer service. It's having integrity, being innovative in this moment, uh, open and free communication, which this this virtual session is speaking specifically to open and free communication. Respect for all. You're going to have opinions that differ from what I believe in, but your opinions are valid, and I should honor them, and I will honor them. Our agency will listen to them. And teamwork uh, that is required. I've got to thank my team that's here today. Um, yes, we're in an area that says you should stay home. Yes, you should have your mask on. I've got five employees here that are, that are still doing the work of the agency, and I'm grateful for their presence. We're, we're, modeling, our we're modeling the safe distancing here, but we're here because we want you to know that you're that important to us. Now I'll let David talk about the philosophy. So to achieve smaller, smarter government, the very first bullet, honor the public by being fair, transparent, and efficient. As Brian was alluding to earlier, the core value of open and free communication, I think, is evident in that first bullet point. The second one, where I think really in, in encompasses what this process is about. The second bullet point says value our customers and co-workers. So we do this internally as well, but externally is where we get the larger crowd by seeking and using their input. Our strategic plans have incorporated the input we receive for both internal, our staff, our internal customers, and from the public. This is an important part of the process, and we don't go into strategic planning with good ideas without y'all's input. That's great stuff, David. It's great. So who we regulate? TDLR is a unique organization, um, and I love it. I love the excitement and the different areas that we're able to touch. We're, we're like the small business of state agencies. We are touching every part of this world in the, the economy. That's why I'm so excited about how this agency and how our licensees are going to be the engine to get Texas back started again. That's what this is all about. I'll let David kind of highlight the different programs we regulate. 39 different programs. If you're not in one of these uh, professionals uh, or industries, you probably know somebody that is. You get your hair cut, you get your nails done, you see these places everywhere along the street. You've seen a mixed martial arts bout somewhere in Texas. Yep. That's something that we regulate. We regulate water wheel drillers and pump installers, the water that goes out, especially in the rural areas where you're having to have a well drilled. We affect so many pieces people's lives with the air conditioning, electricians, the accessibility in the state of Texas by our architectural barriers program. You can go through the list and see either something that you do or somebody that you know does these things. The medical and health professions, which really m shifted our agency to a completely different uh, focus, all those massage therapists, athletic trainers, dietitians, dyslexia, speech language pathologists, they've all had an effect on our agency and for the better. We've had to grow, we've had to grow smarter because of those programs coming to us and being different than what we had done in the past. Sure, we had 
uh, code and construction kind of programs. We had boiler programs. We had things that we were good at, towing companies, service contract providers. Those are things we had done, but now we're even more diverse. And who knows what the future holds? Hopefully you'll have something to do with the, the future. So just staying on this one just a little bit longer, one of the things that's come out of this COVID moment is that the words essential and non-essential are being used in the different orders. But let me make it very clear. Whether you're in the essential category or the non-essential category, what you do is honorable. The work that you do is important and necessary. I know that some of the cosmetologists and barbers, massage therapists, are feeling some sort of way that somehow their, their industry is being demeaned that they are. You guys are incredible, competent professionals. Uh, this moment's just requiring that, that safe distancing or social distancing uh, that's out there. But let me tell you very clearly, all work and all the programs that we regulate, your work is honorable and it's necessary. And we're honored to be part of just helping you kind of do what you do. And when we get back on our feet, you guys are going to be a key part of that. David, let's go back to the, uh, the instructions because we're getting ready to, to go into the strategic planning part of it. So those of you that have downloaded PollEverywhere.com, you should have an easy time getting on. Again, putting username TVLR2020 is going to be what you want to do. You can always skip the name if you want to remain anonymous. Option two, go into your web browser, type PollEV.com forward slash TLR2020, you'll be on track. The last option, which is available to those individuals that may not have a smartphone, we still have a way to text. The text number is TDLR2020 to 22333. If you text TLR2020 to 22333, you will get a prompt. If you really have a smartphone and get the blue prompt, you can click on that. But if you don't have a smartphone, you have to wait for the streaming questions to come up. When you watch the question come up on the screen, that's your opportunity to participate in the question via text. So David, you're going to be on your phone throughout. And I have two don't phones. Let them know why. That's right. So I am not texting my wife and my kids. I'm making sure what y'all see is what I'm seeing on my phone because I'm also logged in to poll everywhere. I want to make sure y'all's experience is as good as the one that we think we're giving. If not, let us know. In fact, in the last session, we had someone give us some constructive criticism on how they thought we could do it differently with um, uh, YouTube Live or perhaps Facebook Live is another option. But this is what we've been using. It's been working for us. We're open to these suggestions as well. Outstanding, outstanding. Carnesa, can you bring up the slide about some of the statistics? So a couple of things about TDLR. When you look at the agency, uh, it, since 2016, I actually came, took over on, on September 1, 2016. One's not related to the other. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had more than 543,000 new licensees come to our agency, whether it was through the transfer of the 13 health programs or podiatry coming to us, or whether it was with driver education safety, uh, transportation network companies. Uh, there's been a lot of change at the agency. We have more than 840,000 licensees, not counting the 416,000 motor fuel registrations, basically the gas pumps that you see throughout Texas. Uh, so we're extremely busy. 1,794 licensees per every one employee that the agency has. Uh, and it's daunting sometimes, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the challenges it puts on our customer service resources are just being available uh, to folks like we have been in the past. It's something we want to keep that touch in. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is that the, um, the fee reductions, we've still been able to, to be efficient in our cost and how we manage those costs because that ultimately impacts you and it ultimately impacts the customers that you serve. So some near $20 million have stayed in the pockets in the last 10 years since uh, we've been at this at the agency. So we're really proud of those things, but I know you're going to give us some ideas today that are going to allow us to continue that legacy of success and efficiency. Okay, so uh, I'm an old sports guy. You can't tell from my overweight size and everything. <laughs> However, uh, I know we've got to do some warm-ups to get started. So the first thing we want to do is put a warm-up question on the, on the poll everywhere. So the first question is just how are you doing today? How are you feeling today? On this particular question, you only get one response. You can move it around if you change your mind. But we're looking for you to let us know, are you feeling kind of grumpy? We're breaking up your afternoon lunch. Or are you kind of happy about things, having the opportunity to give us your input and give us your feedback? I'm feeling happy today, so I'm going to go right towards the green. I'd like to see as many as possible showing up on that screen. Now, if you don't see as many as you would expect at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you've got some friends out there that may have forgotten to log in, to sign up. Maybe they forgot 
uh, to attend the morning session and they're available for the afternoon session, we need them to log in. PollEverywhere.com, you can download the app, makes it real easy on your phone, or PollEV.com slash TDLR2020. You can go to our website and there's a link to get straight to it. One of the things that David told me before, and this is uh, aging me, um, David, I think he read it in a history book or something, <laughs> but he was so worried about folks coming out, you know, like the, um, the Jerry Lewis, you know, telethon. Aging and, myself, yes. And, and, so, and like no one was going to show up, we threw a party, but um, I think we've always had great success in having you reach out to us, and I'm looking at uh, where people are. I'm probably that green, you know, that second green one, because um, I feel good. One, because of the session we had this morning, and I feel hopeful about the session we're going to have today. There's enough folks out here to help us make a difference in how we regulate. And the thing I'm trying to focus on is being a better agency tomorrow, whether it's tomorrow outside of COVID or whether it's literally just tomorrow, that you give us something that allows us to be better. So we're going to get started. I think that's a great, great kickoff there. I agree. Something that you said at the earlier session, Brian, we had a great turnout. But all it takes is one good idea to make a difference. Yes. The numbers that I'm seeing up here, we've got lots of opportunities. So I appreciate the participation. Let's move on to the next one. This one lets us know where you're at, where you're coming from, who you're representing. So pick a spot on that map. Let's see where you are. We had folks this morning from uh, Amarillo to Mercedes to Hildago to West Laco to Houston to Austin to Dallas. Uh, we had a great cross-section of folks uh, participating this morning. All right, great. We got some folks out of the Houston area. For a little while, we had someone in the Gulf of Mexico on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you all at? They're back there. <laughs> very good, very good. Keep on populating. Trying to see if somebody's from my home county of Lee County up in the house. Very good, outstanding, East Texas being represented. Liking it, liking the participation. This is great. All right, man, y'all got some, colors of, some cousins and some kin folks up in there in the, in the panhandle. Tell them to come <laughs> on, get on their phone. We got to hear where they're coming from. Very good, very good. This is outstanding. Appreciate it. great again if you know of a couple of people that should be giving us their input polleverywhere.com you can also if you look at the top of the slide if you're in your browser you can cut and paste and send it to them via email so they can also participate just a quick tweet or email to your friends so that they're they know what's going on and that they have a chance to give input to TDLR very good Courtney so let's go to the next slide this is give us an idea of, of who and which programs are represented as David said earlier, with 39 programs, there's quite a bit. So what's your favorite program regulated by TDLR? And, and I think they can do multiple. That's right. If you're an electrician and a barber, you can actually put both programs. If you have a true favorite, put it up there, because you're going to see later on our very competitive boss. He likes to see who's representing today. Cosmetology has the larger the licensee base. Outstanding. But there could be somebody else that takes the top spot. I remember last strategic planning cycle when we were up in the Dallas area, uh, we had a gentleman who was an auctioneer and a massage therapist. Yeah, so he was doing bids while he was like working on people's hamstrings. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. It was good to have him in there. All right, so we got cosmetology, uh, speech language pathologists. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Auctioneering, massage, uh, licensed breeders, outstanding mold. Yeah, we got to meet some of the mold folks during this last legislative session. Uh, you guys made a difference in, in that conversation, so we appreciate you. Stepping in. There's my midwives all day long. <laughs> Love me some midwives. Uh, the audiologists, thank y'all for being here. Appreciate it. What else? Vehicle storage facilities, industrialized housing and building. All right. Wow. Very good. Very Laser good. hair removal. There's a property tax assessor and collector. Combative sports. Uh, sanitarians, laser hair removal. HVAC, dog and cat breeders. Got our towing. Got our towing folks coming in. This is called a, a word map. And so it just kind of gives you. Uh, the larger the words are, the more folks that are typing that in. So it kind of gives you proportionality uh, as you're looking at this. But auctioneering is in the house. Uh, motorcycle safety, some of our newer programs, which will take over on September 1. Good to have you. Combative sports, this is not a fight. Gloves up, gloves down, but let's bring it. Let's bring it on, man. This is good stuff. Laser hair removal, we touched on that. 
What else do we have in there, David? Fuel, motor fuels, at the daycare, OEP. All right. Office of a Defense Education Program. Good to have you here. Y'all have some challenges, man. You have some challenges. Um, very good. Thank you all for being here. Keep on coming up. Who else is in the house? The band of sports. We got the seconds. Motorcycles. Motorcycles over there. San Antonio. I like the ones that put the, where they're representing instead of because they may be representing more than one program. I got the daycare up there, like we were talking about speech pathologists yeah. maybe there as well. I don't, I don't know if I see driver education on there yet. I see um, architectural barriers. Electricians are in the house. Outstanding. The beauty. Cosmetologists, y'all representing, but uh, speech language pathology. Thank y'all for being here. We're really glad to have you. PTPs up there on the board. Great. Who else? Who else is here? Mediators. I don't see any podiatrists. I don't see any feet people yet. UAPR. Where my foots, peoples? I need y'all to come in here and talk to us. HVAC. Thank you. One of our longest standing programs here at the agency. Massage, what else do you see, David? San Antonio, storage, nothing new. Some of the same ones, this, the text is getting bigger or smaller based on who's giving their input. This is outstanding, outstanding. Carnesa, can you give us the other view that lists them? So code enforcement made it, and I'm glad to see CEO's that. CEO's great. During this time of COVID, there's some code enforcement officers working out there. I saw them just the other day. So this is how we're going to go through these. They'll come up one at a time. We're going to be able to talk to you as we start getting uh, the information in. So I feel like we're warmed up pretty good. I think so, too. I think we got good county representation, incredible program representation. Um, I want David to go over one more time the, uh, the brainstorming rules, and then we're going to kick right into high gear and we're going to talk about the elephant in the room. So brainstorming rule, rules. All ideas will be recorded. It's very important. Y'all see, and y'all are in control. If you've got a phone in your hand, you've got that laptop in front of you, you're the one that's giving in, and it's unfiltered. Whatever you give to us, that's what we're putting up. It's going to be recorded. It's going to be on our website. So all ideas will be recorded. No idea is ridiculous. Make sure that you're respectful of your peers. They may have a completely contrary idea to what yep. you have. Just offer your other idea up there. If it's an older idea, something that's been around before, that's okay as well. Sometimes things come back. Sometimes an idea is ripe. So put those ideas out there. If you've had them before and maybe didn't take uh, shape last time, maybe it will this time. No judgments. We're going to do our best to not give any judgments. We'll comment on what we see and maybe what we hadn't thought about and share with you real what's going on in our minds when you share your ideas with us. Build on one another's ideas. I think that's the most important part and something we're, we miss because we don't have a crowd in here kind of building on the conversation. We're going to have to go to the screens and rely on yep. you guys listening to us. I'm sorry, rely on you people listening to us so that we can build on each other's ideas and then generate as many ideas as possible. That's the most important part. We're trying to get as much as possible from everybody participating. All right, let's get started. So the world, not just TDLR, not just Texas, not just the U.S., the world has been impacted by COVID-19 in a way that has shown that we weren't ready for it. Nobody was ready for it. But there'll be another pandemic. That's what history has told us. There will be another one. Don't have the name for it, COVID-20. It's going to be another one that's going to come around the corner. So our question to you is, how can we better prepare? We being the agency, we being you, we being the state of Texas, we being the U.S. These conversations are going to be shared with a lot of folks. So how can we better prepare for the next pandemic? Having a set of procedures and rules in place. Let us have a little bit more detail on that. Are you in a specific program? Because we actually have some disaster rules, but when we did them, we were thinking about hurricanes and fires and floods and tornadoes. Pandemics wasn't necessarily in our minds. Now it is. It's on the forefront. So if you've got some specific procedures and rules that we need to be thinking about, let us know what those have the detail on. Bernice, can you highlight the established? So establish contingency plans based on current and past uh, pandemics basically do our homework <laughs> learn from from what this moment outstanding uh, has paperwork been given to Abbott absolutely we're we have provided and will continue to provide uh, requests to waive rules to waive statutory provisions uh, speech language pathologists we hear you we know it's so important for you to be able to take care of your clients 
uh, those young minds and shaping their ability to, to speak, particularly in this devastating time, is critical. And we are working hard to try to get that done for you. We really are. So keep the comments coming. We get it. Absolutely. Offer unemployment insurance. Texas Workforce Commission has been inundated with phone calls and there's probably more opportunities now because of the Recovery Act that's been put into place for more professions to receive some types of unemployment benefits. That's something that you can look into. So, Carnison, on lowering the standards for test, uh, we just met last week with our, our exam provider, PSI, to look at ways where we can do the uh, examination even more remotely, allow for telehealth for assistance. We hear you big time on that. And we've, we've already working on that request, and hopefully it'll be granted soon. Start looking forward uh, to an embracing technology that allows employees to interact with constituents remotely. Man, yo, we can't put the genie back in the bottle. There's no doubt that our world is going to change in how we deliver services uh, and how we uh, respond as a regulator. This has changed the way we're going to live. And so we've got to figure out what that's going to look like. Know what positions are essential and non-essential. Uh, we've had that question, and I think it's so critical. We shared with you uh, the information from the, um, the Homeland Security, uh, how they've identified essential and non-essential for infrastructure issues. Uh, we'll continue to try to find that information, but that's a great point. Early and open communication between licensees and TDLR. Um, yeah, we could have started a little bit sooner, and we should have. Uh, hopefully, we're making up for that with those daily updates on what's happening. If you haven't been to our web page, we're trying to keep those updates on our COVID page, which is front and center on our main page. As local jurisdictions, as the, the governor, as the president put out information, as the CDC puts out information, we're updating things that would affect our licensees to get it out to you. So if you haven't signed on to our list server, you need to be there. That's where we're posting our information. Cornice, can you go back to the, uh, the thank you for the flexibility we've already shown? We're going to provide more. Uh, what we've seen, at least in the last disasters is that they come in stages. And so not every intervention, not every waiver needs to happen on the front end. We're going to continue to look at ways of making your life easier. Uh, our licensees that have been impacted financially, we're going to try to figure out ways to make your life easier. Have advisory boards engage in the planning? Absolutely. I think we may start having some conversations about what did and what didn't work at upcoming advisory board meetings, which may be held through teleconferencing. I mean, life is going to be different, y'all. Close massage schools and establishments immediately. Uh, people can live without those, okay? Uh, do you have an annual review process that includes annual pandemic? I think we're going to have one now. I think we're going to have one now. We obviously, like other agencies, have the uh, contingency and operation plan, uh, the COOP, and it talks again, like David said, about disasters that are physical in nature. Uh, the pandemic piece hit all of us pretty hard, but yeah, we're going to go back to the drawing board and really try to be smarter and figure out what tomorrow is going to look like, how we can learn from this moment. A fund that can be paid into, that can be drawn from for emergency funds. There's a couple of our programs that have something like that. Perhaps we can look at it, and when you get to the questions later on of being king or queen for a day, you may want to tell us which programs that should be, if there's some way to accommodate and plan for that. Work groups specifically designed to address this issue for midwives. That's, that's fantastic. I think other people will agree that that may need to happen across the board. Having just a telehealth and medical work group that deals with it. Having a work group that deals with the, um, uh, the code enforcement aspect of what we're regulating. Having a group that deals with the barber, ma uh, massage, the cosmetology, laser hair, that have similar type of activities. Um, that, that would be so helpful. Great suggestion. Text TDLR 2020. Someone's advertising for us. That's awesome. It's up actually at the top of every slide. So if you haven't already sent that to somebody, please do. Has specifics ready for online learning instead of in-person? I think that's going to be part of the norm now. Uh, we've gone through and looked at most of our programs, and, and the majority of them allow for online learning. But we were able to get some changes for the cosmetologists and the barbers and the driver education schools as well as the massage therapy. But, yeah, I think that's going to be the norm, don't you? Send out the approved online apps for tracking students' practical applications. In fact, send oh. it now so we know what to use for cosmetology. Okay, we'll get back with, with, with our folks internally. I want to figure out what that, that looks like. Thank you. Allow speech language pathology assistants to continue to serve their clients and students through teletherapy. We've got to get you there too. I agree. It's so, so important and, and, and the steps that we're taking are moving us in that direction. Um, but I just think about the gift of speech that you provide 
that makes a difference in young lives that carries them to their adulthood. And this was a resounding theme in the first session as well. So power to you guys to come back and represent for what y'all think is important. By responding to the pandemic and not worrying about tow trucks and storage lots throughout the year, we know our business better than anyone, and TLR is finding, out, finding, finding us out of his business. business. All right. Increased stockpile of necessary respiratory stockpiles. Yeah, we saw that the supply chain was something that came up in, in the earlier session. It's something that the country is dealing with, but that's a great, great point. Uh, teletherapy for speech-language pathologists. Uh, we definitely hear you. We'll continue to articulate that we hear you on this, and now you're like, do something about it. Uh, we're going to try. We're trying to make something happen for you. Anything we can do to push Abbott to approve it? He's our boss, so we're going to we're going to make sure he he hears from us. <laughs> um, I misspoke this morning. I said that the limitations for tele, uh, telepractice and telemedicine was in the law. It's in the rules, and so we will come back and have a more robust conversation with the advisory board as we move through this process to see how we can have it already tempered. So great point, and we can do some things in the future to avoid this. Distance education is definitely going to be prevalent going forward. It's our future. We need to know which programs in particular that you're interested in. If it's all programs, great. But if you have one that's specific that we need to prioritize, it'd be helpful to have that additional detail. It's a great one. Learn how to handle situations based on these situations, um, especially for scenarios where providers are affected due to supervision issues and technicalities. We actually engaged in a process a year and a half ago called scenario planning. Uh, the what ifing, if there's a new executive director, if there's a change in how regulation looks, is there a change in staff, the demographic changes. And we talked about a, lie, a wide array of things that could happen. Pandemic wasn't on that list. It wasn't on that list, but it will be from now on. What else do you have for us? Allow for alternate methods of training new licensees and community education through alternative remote training platforms, i.e. online training for mobile assessors, online and remote training, all these things are going to be just part of our regular culture. There's no way we can get around it. We're going to be in it for some time. So no doubt it's going to be pre prevalent through our in industry and education for well, our program. And David, you see it with the, the improvements, um, the, the, the dramatic improvements in technology that are changing the way that those online interfaces uh, would work. I mean, I remember, you know, getting the, the games and having to wait for, you know, the, the handshake. <laughs> you know, the handshake now. I mean, it's instant. And the speed that we have and the ability to really uh, be present when you're not even there, it's going to only improve. And, and this is going to help it. Keep pushing to allow TDLR for more authority to approve teletherapy. We're going to have those conversations. Um, on some upcoming advisory boards. Be a part of that process, please. Preparedness is key. Enforcing breeder regulations are incredibly important due to COVID being caused by wet markets. Yep. And Cephalobacter, a bacterial infection that can be spread from puppies to humans, need to be sure that laws are being followed and puppies are not transmitting Campylobacter and other serious diseases. Thank you. Thank you so much. As you know, one of the first things we did was discontinue our inspectors going to those facilities because we didn't want to bring any contamination into those environments. Uh, and that's because of, of the folks uh, in the industry bringing that to our, um, our attention. Allow clinical fellows to provide teletherapy, absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, this morning it was made very clear, and I've had some conversations uh, with Larry Higdon, who is uh, the executive director for TISHA, that ASHA's guidelines provide for this. What we're seeing is we need to bring our rules up in line with ASHA and have that serious conversation about that. Please do not lower the standards. More unqualified workers are not a good solution. We've seen that in the earlier session as well. Yeah. It's, it, you don't have to have a trade-off. You, you can have um, bureaucratic processes removed and still have standards that are high and appropriate. User-friendly website. OK, so we're going to take these pandemic com comments. And I want to segue to the next one, because that's where it really starts working out your intellectual and your innovative muscles. Uh, we're going to go to the next question, and it's, if you're king or queen for a day, what changes would you make in TDLR's laws, rules, or processes? So you could just snap your finger, and anything can happen. Everything's possible. What changes would you make in a law, rule, or a process? Let's see what you got. Give us some detail. Remember, you're not the executive director. You're not even a lawmaker. You are making it happen the very next day because you're king or queen. So let us know the details. We want to know which program you're talking about. If it's more than one, let us know that.
People having difficulty getting that crown on, it looks like. No, no, no. no. <laughs> They're just trying to figure out which outfit to wear. Their with. thumbs are <laughs> blazing fast. <laughs> Cornelia, will you, you guys start working up some numbers for us? Get a preliminary. Okay. So really what you're talking about is amending the government code 418, which has that provision in it. Okay. So not waiting for the governor. Got it. Allow discipline of therapy uh, to provide teletherapy. All right. Allow all. Got it. That's a great one. And where it's in rule, we have an opportunity to move quickly on that. Medications for uh, midwives. Are you saying just generally speaking or in time of pandemic? Generally speaking or in time of pandemic? Declaration of emergency uh, for mold industry. Got it. And that's the one still from Harvey. Restore, 1,500 hours. You know what? No one said that this morning. Thank you for being a first. We're putting it back in there. It's a statutory change. Giving TDLR more authority. All right. They want to give us the power. <laughs> Usually we're trying to remove ourselves from the regulatory process. But if there's something that we can do to make things more streamlined, some authority we already have by rule or by process, let us know. Give us some more detail on what that is. So automatically add... Uh, distance education to all cosmetology courses without application. And, and I think what we need to do is just simply have notification that you're offering it, but not without application. That's great. Good stuff. Good Co stuff. Cosmetology, restore the 1,500 hours. Uh, that's a statutory change, and yeah. that can happen if you're king or queen for a day, or you can go to the legislature and try to pursue that. Okay, so bringing the work groups back in. So this was a, a transfer when the programs came from the Department of State Health Services the board, which was a decision-making board, had a smaller group that went through the cases. So this is just saying, hey, if I'm king or queen, I'm returning it back the way it was. Thank you. Registered photo on a license. Why have it if there's, why have it there if no way to check against it on an official online record? Okay. Give TLR investigators authority to put non-licensed persons in jail. Man, you move as the criminal authority, all right? <laughs> Man. Be able to approve the necessary services right away that have direct impact on clients, such as teletherapy. That's a great one. TDLR, we're hearing that theme. TDLR cannot lobby, but staff often knows best course of action for legislation. We actually use the input you provide us here. You're right. We cannot lobby. But if our customers are telling us this is what we need and they use us as a resource, if the legislators come to us and say, hey, what do y'all need help with? Is there something that's causing a problem? And the public has told us this is a problem like teletherapy. Guess what we have queued up, teed up right away? Your comments. Th this process, the strategic planning process of the TDLR, has built our credibility over at the legislature because they know that we are vetting these issues with you, the experts, and so it really brings credibility to, uh, to this process. So thank you for being a part of it. Give TLR powers in emergency to make decisions in time of emergency, so just really acting fast. Give speech pathologists more respect, especially during these times. I would go back to the old cosmetology practical exam is what I'm reading down there because acrylic nails, waxing, and eyelash strip is very low on the cosmetology curriculum. So people like what they saw in the past. Sometimes ideas are right. They come back around. Okay. And I want to touch on giving the uh, speech language pathology assistants more respect. I don't think people recognize how learned and how professional you are. And I'm hoping that somewhere in this COVID-19 response moment, they're going to figure it out. We're going to continue letting folks know uh, the education, the experience, and the value of the services you provide. And it really helps now knowing that ASHA's guidelines allow for you all to deliver it as well. That's going to be an important part of our puzzle moving forward. Thank you. Someone who really understands what a speech pathologist does. In the testing requirements, allow for alternative methods for testing, if needed, but not lowering standards of testing. I agree. And our subject matter experts help us keep the quality of the examinations and make sure that we're measuring those things that are important to make somebody, uh, make, ensure that they're a professional when they're doing the job. Considering changing the way the customer service uh, department works with their jobs ranging from answering the phones and emails uh, to actually beginning to license your process. All right, got somebody who knows our stuff inside. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well at home. <laughs> Hang in there. Keep coming. <laughs> Move the mold program back to DSHS with other pathogen regulations, asbestos lead, that needs health inspectors. We actually still have some of the program over there at DSHS. We've got a portion, the licensing portion over here, and that has been brought up in the past. It may be brought up again during the legislative session. Yeah, the mold program, in fact, 
we contract back to dishes to perform the inspections related to that program. So uh, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. The ability to make rules about students and uh, preceptors for midwives. Okay. And so we got to start with statute giving us rulemaking authority to touch on students and preceptors. Good stuff. Thank you. Investigate massage complaints by region. I know our boss is really proud of the anti-trafficking unit that we now have resources for. We did such a good job with just one person divided to disaster response and anti-trafficking. They decided, hey, these guys know what to do with people and monies. They've given us a little bit of both, and now they're focused on finding those bad actors that can do, anti, uh, that can do human trafficking or sex trafficking. Thank you so much for coming back and, and posting. This was earlier uh, in our early session, <laughs> about the 320 hours. So thank you for giving us a little bit more uh, texture to it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Generally focus more on unlicensed activity uh, rather than focusing on small violations. It's a great point. Uh, we continue to, to go through our inspection checklist to take out those things that, are, uh, that can be seen nitpicky because they are and really focus on those that, that cause physical harm, financial harm, or sanitation issues. So we'll continue to refine that list but also, also get after those unlicensed folks. Medications for midwives all the time. We saw something similar in the previous session, the morning Thank session. Thank you so much. I'd, I'd asked them earlier in this conversation, ah, there you. was it just for emergencies or not? Thank you so much. If I were queen for a day, I would not lower the standards of the massage industry by taking away the emblex. Okay. Earlier today in the session, they, they, they said take away emblex and go to a state exam, and now you're offering this. This is good stuff. Know that TDLR has many disciplines, not just a few. Yeah. It's important to remember that we are 39 programs, and so when we make decisions, some of them can be across the board, like lowering fees. We try to do that across the board as much as possible. Some of the exam providers are different, depending on the program that we're looking at, and we, they may not be all conducive to the same thing. But when it comes to licensing, we tried our best to make things similar. So, so the hours currently change September 1, 2020. Why did TDLR make it retroactive? Actually, the way the statute reads, it says that individuals can get a license at 1,000 hours beginning on September 1. So it didn't say start the program on September 1 going forward. It said that an applicant for a license. So we wanted to make sure that we had the system in place to capture those students that are moving towards that moment. Uh, so so that, that's why we, we started it there. But it's not moving before the process. It's just putting the system in place for those applicants that can come after for cosmetology require all schools teach 1,000 hours of education, students earn a provisional license, and then complete 500 hours under a certified wow. apprenticeship program. So we saw some in the earlier one with the apprenticeship program. That would put us all on the same playing field and ease students into the industry. This would also create a highly trained professional. That is the most detail I've ever seen on an apprenticeship uh, request. And I'm talking about since I've been here since uh, the program came in 2007. I've never seen that level of detail. I've read the other apprenticeship programs across the nation. Thank you so much for sharing that. It means a lot. Allow for teletherapy for the LSOPAs because circumstances arise and pausing services can cause regression into patients' care as well as SLPAs need to work. Absolutely. To include massage therapists in rules that don't work in a massage establishment. Only establishments were directed in rule to close non-therapists who work in a building where there are other businesses or in homes. Okay. And we tried to make that clear that the, uh, the folks who were not working in an establishment for massage didn't fall into the medically necessary activity. So they should have stopped as well, even though they weren't in a massage establishment, performing a non-essential service in that moment uh, should have covered them. But we'll do a better job of communicating that. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Have better communication between TDLR, law enforcement, tow industry, DMV, and tax assessors. There still is different counties doing different processes. I agree. I agree. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Uh, have pandemic policy and processes uh, on the website for reference on how-tos. We will. We will. We'll, we'll do an autopsy of this, this whole moment. Um, I've, I've got one of our folks working on just chronicling the steps that we've already taken. And, and when I say steps, I'm talking about the good ones and the missteps. Uh, so we're chronicling that, and we're going we're gonna to do an autopsy on this thing and make sure that we're smarter, not just down the road, but we're taking uh, steps right now to improve it. 
Someone has asked us to redefine commercial breeder definition so it levels the playing field for all breeders and creates fairness to all breeders and fairness to TDR inspectors so it eliminates guessing how many puppies are sold and how many breeding females, females a breeder owns. It's a great point. So you would go into the change the law to, to, to move that definition to where it included. If you, if you sell, then you have to be licensed. Thank you so much have a program specialist assigned to each division which hold experience from the field to the classroom in addition to the advisory boards. Have the correct people for inspections and school visits. Okay. Find a way to limit bad actors. Um, legislative attempts at reducing TLR oversight for affected participants and the public. Okay. Give us some more detail, a little bit more on that, okay? VSF 11. All right. I've been waiting for you to show up, baby. Some detail, yeah. <laughs> um, has been changed. Uh, ASAP to stop insurance companies from stealing vehicles. There's no legislation needed. It was created by rulemaking authority by previous legislation. It can be done now by having virtual meeting like this one. It can be changed if TLR wants to protect the public. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. VSF 11. More sanitation for barbers and go back to 1500 hours. Okay. VSF 11. Change it ASAP. Stop the insurance companies from stealing uh, those vehicles. Require the written exam only for cosmetology. Oh, wow. Wow. So, so that's doing away with the practical. Doing away with the practical. Gotcha. Uh, work with Sunset to ensure UAPR remains a TDLR. And that's a process, I think, in August they have their, their public hearings. Uh, their report may come out in June. And so there'll be an opportunity for uh, the public to weigh in on that as well. Make sure you're actually keeping abreast of the Sunset's website because that's when they'll publish and, and let you know when they're having their hearings. Implement alternative testing measures for emergency situations. Already exploring some of those things in regards to remote testing. Uh, we've already talked with the vendor PSI about what we can do and whether it's possible to actually do it the, the right way, secure way. And one of the questions came up in that conversation, Brian, are you only looking at that for today? And I said, no. This is going to be for the rest of our lives. We need to change the process. So we, we are recognizing that we need to make this adjustment in this moment. And it's going to allow um, a greater convenience, but also same protections with the proctoring elements, uh, but a greater convenience for our applicants and candidates. And it's going to allow us to weather these type of storms. Under the LHR program, make the senior designation more than paying tuition to a school to supervise 100 treatments and paying a fee to the state includes some sort of educational component and perhaps an examination. Wow, okay. Um, on that laser hair one there, if you can, let us know if there are any other states that have uh, an educational similar. or an exam component. We can always, we don't mind cheating from smart states <laughs> and stealing from them. So if they got good ideas, we'll take them, okay? TLR to work with health departments to do checklists on unlicensed massage spas or foot reflex, reflexology locations to make sure they comply with the governor's office. Got you. Basically, are they complying with the orders that are in place today? And, and we are working on some, some requirements trying to look at how we will respond to uh, complaints. We're already getting complaints about some businesses who should be closed staying open. We're trying to figure out who to refer that to. So. Uh, we'll be on top of that. Hire more staff to investigate and act on unlicensed workers. Unlicensed activity is a concern from everybody that's participated so far. At about 5,000 more TDLR employees. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but thank you. I'm sorry. You're king or queen. No judgment. You snapped your finger. You made it happen. Let's do it. <laughs> They're going to work from home now. Uh, speech language pathology interns and assistants, they need teletherapy. We get you. And they do. Uh, reinstate the SLP ideology board. So you would make them a policy board and not an advisory board. Make sure I'm right on that, okay? Make the entire application process online. We hear you on that one. There is no smooth process for getting university transcripts to TDL electronically. Good point. Develop a compelling program to educate parents on the value of career in the trades. Man. So this comment here is really resonating because we are seeing that the, the populations for air conditioning contractors and electricians, that they're aging. And we don't have enough young people who are deciding when they're in the seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, and tenth grade that I want to go into that path because they've been convinced that it's not a great career, that, 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 that it's not value in it. But these careers, as I said earlier, these jobs and licenses, they're all honorable work. 
And so that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. I'm so proud of our regulatory program management staff that have spent some time the past few years actually visiting these conferences where they're trying to develop trades, the electricians, the barber and cosmetology professions. We have uh, staff out there to make sure that we're helping support the development of those programs in the high schools and, and private schools. Dave, you want to take the I would insure one? I would ensure that for all programs that do not have an advisory board, mold assessors and remediators, TDLR would reach out to industry associations like Texas Mold Assessors and Remediators Association to help advise and guide decisions that are made affecting the actual people working in the industry. That's a great point. And, and we're going we're gonna to put something on you. I'm going I'm to take on not a, a king role, but a princely role. Uh, make sure those groups are attached uh, and, and signed up to our listserv messages so they can get that information. And then make sure those groups did exactly what they did this last legislative session. They let us know they existed. They came and talked to us, and they've been present. And hopefully we are building that relationship that you're talking about there. Thank you. Treat towing and VSF licensees as customers rather than criminals. I agree. I agree. And I apologize that you feel that way, and we're going to do something to continue to change that because that's not who we are, and that's not what we're about. Yes, with an exclamation point, 500 hours under apprenticeship for cosmetology students. Someone else agreed with the other, other person that what an apprenticeship it sounds like. I'm just going to say, whoever did that got fancy with their, <laughs> their wording. You see how David did the exclamation. We're capable of, of, of exclaiming. Yeah. <laughs> Plan for summer. What are we looking at? Yeah. What are we looking at? Is this strategic planning process. How are we going to, to fire up the engine of getting Texas back on its feet? Y'all are going to do that, but we got to make sure that we get out of your way that the licenses are renewed quickly, phones are answered, that you have that document that you need to get back in business and people can find you. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. That's the part that we're going to play in this. Someone to understand thousands of special education students are not receiving speech therapy at this time. They're no. speech pathologists holding a master's. We do understand. We've been, this has been uh, prevalent from the morning session as well. We do understand and we hear you. And I don't want you to stop telling us until we get it right. Keep telling us. Keep talking to us uh, because we're not going to forget that, but don't you let us forget it either. Uh, mandate insurance reimbursement for midwives. Okay, so are we going into the, um, the insurance code, the insurers? How is that one going to work? What statute are, are we changing in this process? Put the responsibility of the practical on the schools. They need to be in charge of making sure that the students are well-rounded. Schools would be required to maintain proof of the practice each student completes. Somebody earlier proposed to just have the written. This takes it to a different, different track. I'll let you do the, this next one. Towing and vehicle storage facility complaints require that the complainant provide identifying vehicle information of the vehicle involved if the vehicle was towed or stored. This information is not currently provided within the complaints nor within the notice of complaints received by licensees. So provide this information to licensee within the notice of complaint and include the statutory or regulatory deadline in which the license must respond to TLR. That's some detail. That's stuff okay. that we need to see. Okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying we ask you to give us all this stuff, but when we send you an NOAV, we don't tell you what we're, what we're taking you up on. Okay. All students enrolled, bless you, I think. All students enrolled prior to May 1st, 2020 will be required to complete the 1,500 hours as is the current law, correct? If you're king or queen, it's correct. That's not <laughs> correct today. But if you're king or queen, it's correct. Good job social distancing on camera, guys. Actually, just so you know, we got our gloves and our masks that we came in, And actually, we're wearing them. We've got the tape on the ground. We need to protect this guy. He's like, uh, yeah, he's the, he's, the, he's the dude. You're too kind. <laughs> cosmetology still needs a practical examination. Um, it does not uh, be aligned with cosmetology curriculum. Okay, so thank you very much. So earlier comments said just written. This comment said, no, man, we got to keep them both. Bootleggers hurt all industries, and betting against them is unrealistic because of what legitimate businesses have to do, without question. And we try to, um, to help consumers know the difference that the, the bootleggers don't have bootleggers. I'm saying it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that they don't have uh, insurance. They don't have the training. Uh, they, don't have the, uh, they don't pull the, the certificates or the permits, permits. correctly. Um, we try to make that distinction, and then when we find that one of those individuals is operating without a license in your city or, or in Hildago or in Merced's, uh, we send that information to those local newspapers so that the consumers can say, oh, Bill, well, Billy, Billy over here is not licensed, and TDLR got him. Uh, but we'll continue to try to find ways 
of letting people know good actors and bad actors. One of our king or queens wanted applications or the license department to communicate with the enforcement department regarding massage investigations better. I guess there's more communication that needs to happen, left hand knowing what the right hand's doing. Thank you. We'll work on that. Replace ancient labor-laden software applications such as Tulip. Replace with a more user-friendly, adaptive, and modern solution, which helps create efficient processes between agency and constituents. I got a feeling that we're going to see that king or queen comment in our internal comments too. Probably so. Probably <laughs> so. Add more skills to the 320 eyelash program curriculum. Okay. Heard that earlier no, in, the, in the morning yeah. session. Yeah. Manicure written testing at 500 hours. So have an early examination testing provisions for that. Hmm. I, you know what? I don't think I don't I've think heard, heard that, that one, one before. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you. Put homemaking and shop back in school and junior high school. Some of the best classes I had were that homemaking class and personal business management class. So, yes, yeah, shop class, uh, we need the people in the trades. Other states are allowing uh, SLPs to do um, teletherapy. Why not Texas? Because it's in our rules that prevents it. And we've got to work through that. Give us the, uh, the uh, states that are doing it. That information helps because we can share that to continue to make um, the request stronger. Wow, I haven't seen this one. Parents with career in cosmetology would be able to teach and give hours, like driver education? Parent time. Parent, <laughs> parent hair. Parent hair. I like it. Towing and vehicle storage facilities. File unlicensed, unlicensed company. Find unlicensed companies. Penalize those unlicensed companies more than TLR seems to find the licensed group. Very good. Very good. And we've made changes, but obviously we've got to do some more, don't we? Building on ideas. I agree. Maybe we need to go back to the speech language pathology board. Outstanding. Towing and vehicle storage facilities, support us, please. Bring back trade educational, and that was just down below about getting uh, those back into school. Good stuff. Yeah, they're making our kids choose really early in junior high and even prior on what they want to do and who they want to be when they grow up. They can learn about these uh, trades that are providing good professions for these uh, young youngsters. Well, an important word for us. They, they keep our system going. They keep us healthy. Enforcement attorneys have open conversations with expert witnesses instead of making incorrect assumptions about a complaint. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So better exchange between our attorneys and the people that are experts. Okay. Schools without violations be inspected once a year instead of twice a year. Okay. So it's a risk-based component that you're adding in there. It's smart. Same license for cosmetology and barbers. First time we heard it today. <laughs> I'm sorry, first time we heard it this afternoon. <laughs> we heard it this morning. Allow for more funding to hire help for SLP. Get to the students in need of speech therapy. Absolutely. Will TDLR approve distance education, including practical, if we are not back at cosmetology schools by summer? So here's the deal. The, um, the way we, we word our request is that when we get approval, we get that approval for a time certain, and then as long as that order uh, is in place. And earlier, you may recall that one of the folks said, TLR needs to stop moving forward with the mold uh, disaster response. That mold response that they're referring to was from Harvey. And so orders can be continued for a long time. So the short answer I did not give. The long answer I gave was we're going to take that into consideration because that's important. Uh, if you can't go to school, then we need you to be able to get the education. We didn't ask for it uh, to not allow you to have it. I would teach professionalism and customer service and how to treat clients in the spirit of excellence and genuine care. Care is truly what we need. Is that related to a particular program or is that for TDR staff? Do we need to be better at our professionalism and customer service? Give us a little detail on that. Keep the 1,500 hours for cosmetology, theory online, and make schools do the practical. I heard that one earlier. Very good. Mandate all reflexology and foot massage locations to have licenses to operate. Very good. Very good. Let's, um, we're going to do a count on how many folks and how many comments. It's not a competition. <laughs> but I, already I can tell that y'all generated more comments this afternoon than we got this morning. So this is outstanding. Eyelash extension test, early testing at 250. So basically the idea of having early testing for all the, uh, the license types, whether it's manicures, whether it's eyelash extension, whether it's esthetician. Very good. If license is in process, market in process, not expired due to paperwork backlog. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So right. per volume participating, 
the amount of ideas generated may be more, but actually for King or Queen for a day, we have 93 ideas that were submitted to us out of 68 for pandemic, which is the lower number. People have been struggling with the pandemic because we are in it right now, still trying to figure out what we're doing. I even saw some of them put just a question mark. What do I put here? What do they want from me? But 68 for pandemic and King or Queen for a day, we've had 93 and count. responses and counting. There's some good stuff here. Thank y'all for y'all's participation. And here's the care response, David. I'll let you respond yes, sir. to that one. Care is what we need in all fields, but especially in cosmetology and barbering because people are so vulnerable. Money follows the spirit of excellence. Wow, that's beautiful. Very well stated. We need our own commission for cosmetology and barbering where we actually have someone who knows our industry and can fairly represent our industries. Good point. Thank you for adding those in for SLPs. Arizona, California, New Mexico, Massachusetts, Florida, Oregon. Are you listening, PIO? We got a list of uh, states that are allowing it. Thank you so much for providing it so quickly. I appreciate it. Regional opportunities for advancement. Hmm. Hmm. Internal? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that it was brought up in our internal uh, focus groups as well. Outstanding. Let's, what else do we have? Okay. Great stuff. These are incredible. We're going to go real quickly to the brainstorming ideal. We're going to go real quickly to what do you think is going to happen over the next five years? Uh, so in this little transition here, I need you to take out your crystal balls, uh, take out your, your modeling uh, uh, software, and come up with your algorithms, and, and let us know what's going to happen over the next five years. So let's go to the, the question and poll everywhere. It's using a crystal ball. We're asking you to tell us the future. During the next five years, what major changes do you expect in your profession or industry and in the state of Texas. It could be economic, it could be political, it could be technology. All these things could run through your head in responding to this question. It could be specific to your program, something that you're interested in, or it could be bigger picture, like who's gonna be the next governor of Texas, who's gonna be the next president of the United States. How does that affect your profession or industry? These are things that we need you to help us think about because like we said, pandemic wasn't on our list. Maybe there's something else that we need to know about or be thinking about. Okay, so in the future, having more of these sessions because technology is going to allow us to do that. Wow, All once right? a month. They, I, I, they I, like I, us that much. I hope they like <laughs> us. I think another point to make on what's going to happen over the next five years is now that we are living through COVID-19, Texas and the U.S. will never be the same. There's going to be more telehealth. Yes, SLPs, there's going to be more telehealth. There's going to be more telepractice. There's going to be people working remotely. Our world is going to change. How is that going to impact us over the next five years? I know they're typing in the background during the next five years. They're looking into that crystal ball. What major changes do you expect in your profession? Man, I'm trying to look outside and see if somebody cut down all the power poles where we're not getting connectivity. I don't see enough typing. There we go. Higher training hours for massage therapy. Audiology increased sale of hearing aids over the internet. Wow. Yeah, that's a good point. Higher training hours, what are you looking at? How many, how many hours do you think it'll be? Increase in the need for SLP, SLP assistants, and SLP interns with a need, knowledge of assistive technology as well as dysphagia. Be able to order duplicate license when you renew your license. Okay, that was on the, uh, the previous page. Thanks for typing in over here. Bare knuckle boxing wow. when you come into Texas. Oh, that's one of our folks. That's cute. Outstanding. So bare knuckle boxing is something that's in maybe three or four states right now, and, and they're interested in coming to Texas. Cool. I would hope to see the department continue to grow and produce more opportunities for one to advance within the department. Sure. I, I, think, I think we have seen that over the years. Outstanding. David Gonzalez for governor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be more technology related. That is so cute. Thanks, honey. I appreciate you sending that one in. <laughs> Virtual assessments of issues with equipment. Very good. So, so the elevators and the boilers having our ability to say, here's a camera that looks at uh, the different things and we can just look at it virtually. Good stuff. Sure will. Go back to the Texas Commission on Cosmetology. Laws for people that do not understand the industry should not be changing programs. A specific commission of industry professionals. Very we good. Okay. 
And that's what Sunset's here for. That's right. So Sunset will be evaluating those things. That's a great point. For those of you that are familiar with our programs, we have advisory boards, but that's a little bit different than having a governor-appointed commission. Allow TDLR more authority on certain issues, allowing speech pathologist assistants and all their therapy discipline to provide teletherapy if they so choose. I've got a feeling that from this COVID moment, and I call it a moment because we're going to get through it. Uh, from this COVID moment, we're probably going to have a very, very detailed discussion about the rule on telehealth and teletherapy <laughs> uh, for speech language pathologists. Medicaid for all or a national health care system will affect midwives. How? It remains to be seen. That's a great point. Thank you. We'll keep it on our radar. We've got some folks that, that have some um, expertise in that area, so we'll, we'll track that. Forms on handheld tablets with rules and regulations prompts when doing inspections with a signature for businesses, copy sent to their company emails, trying to go more digital just like UPS does and FedEx. Good Very stuff. Good. We're hoping that with the, the new licensing system that we received funding for this last uh, session, that we can build those modules that deal with the inspections and will move us towards having those online or, or basically the tablet. Can you push it down just a couple? There was one that I was, as reimbursement. As reimbursement becomes available for telehealth, we can expect it to mushroom. TDLR businesses will be conducted remotely so that we can contract board members from all areas of the state. So if there's insurance yeah. paying for it, no doubt there's going to be more provi people providing it. Well, but David, I think it's a two-parter there. They're also saying that instead of only the people who can afford the travel That's right. to Austin for the advisory board meetings, if we're doing it remotely, we can have the full representation across the state. I it's think true. that's outstanding. It's a great point. Reflexology and foot massage added to the list of places that need to be licensed. Driver education for 18 an older six-hour program online with driving schools. Good point. Constituents' ability to apply online via the iOS and Android apps. Okay. So a TDLR app, we've been talking about it for years. We've been getting closer to have, having a lot of our electronic business, including this type of in exchange. It's, uh, it's probably overdue, and we need to be looking at it. Very good. Tiered licensing for aesthetics, especially with the amount of advancements uh, in the profession. Walk me through the tiered on it. So is it an aesthetic master, an aesthetic uh, person that's in the mid-level, an aesthetic apprentice? Tell me, give us a little bit more on that one, please. Small businesses will really be struggling. Yes, needs to be understanding. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you may recall that during Harvey, you know, we postponed doing complaints in those areas that were hard hit unless they were people stealing money from consumers or harming them directly. Uh, so that's something we've got to be mindful of. Uh, we're going to show common sense. We're going to show restraint. Barbers required to do continuing education hours. Something next five years. Yeah. Yep. Upskilling of midwives and initial training requirements will be greater. Wow. The midwife program continues to graduate uh, up. The profession is amazing already in the differences that they make in the lives and the outcomes for the mother and the child is just fantastic. Term limits and required balanced budgets will be a larger effort to maintain TDLR piece of state budget. Advance a relook at fees in various budget scenarios to stand ready to modify fees to maintain effectiveness of TDLR programs. Fantastic. I'm going to go home and look up those words and see what all that means. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's great stuff. I really appreciate it. Cosmetology written and practical exams will be given by TDLR approved cosmetology instructors instead of PSI. Wow. Five years. I got it. I anticipate there will be major changes with revisions for SLPA with regard to scope of practice. I believe you are <laughs> right. I believe you are right. Wait, the writing is literally on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the writing is on the wall. That's outstanding. Work with law enforcement agencies regarding uh, gain human trafficking intelligence from TDLR investigations. We have some data that can help them, and we're already building those bridges and relationships. That's a great point, though. Constitutional carry once not all workers have a controlled environment. Okay. Constitutional carry, okay. Once, got once it. not all workers have a controlled environment. So because we've got people going out there doing things, constitutional carry is what they think should be put in place. It's the first time we had a constitutional carry comment in any of our strategic planning sessions since I've been here. Thank you for a first. More virtual learning written exams only for cosmetology specialties, inspections done differently. Yes. Give us some detail on how you like those inspections done. We think we're pretty, doing a pretty good job. We've got some direct to enforcement violations. We've got some common t top 10 violations to inform the public of what we're seeing. But if there's a different way to do it, let us know. Give us the detail. So I'm hoping that the rules will change 
as far as continuing education there uh, for massage therapists, 12 hours every two years is not enough. They should, and they should not be able to do it online. Outstanding. Okay, thank you. We've seen some of those comments on our Facebook page as well as we're looking and exploring at CE opportunities and the COVID response. Finally, provide a licensed nail tech designated on the board. Okay. Credit cards taken in the field for licenses. All right, just full service right there. Constitutional carry, not all workers and trades. There it is again. Yes. So we haven't had it in, in 100 years, and now we got two <laughs> constitutional carry. Better health care system for cosmetologists and barbers. Gym passes for professionals in the fields and active full-time. If you think back to what just happened a week and a half ago with the Family First Response Act for Corona, they've made some changes. They, the federal government, in insurance and benefits, uh, unemployment benefits for self-employed uh, businesses and individuals that they've never done before. I think that genie can't go back in the bottle either. It's going to be something to watch. Same requirements for cosmetology and barbering. Currently not the same. We know this. Yes. More virtual courses. I think there will be. I think there will be. The Governor Disaster Declaration Waiver and the mold industry will finally be lifted. <laughs> <laughs> I got love for you, whoever that is. I'm hugging you virtually right now. Motorcycle education will continue to struggle, make training for both instructors and students more affordable and accessible. Okay. Program's going to be coming on September 1. Yes. Continue to help us, okay? The process of writing and getting health care and life insurance is going to remain an option of with online or in person. It will be more difficult to. Mm. Struggling small business owners that can't hire skilled workers due to shortage, we must promote trades and successful career options. Absolutely. The four-year degrees. People have a different choice, and we need to really let them know that both paths are honorable and that they're viable. Lower fees for TDLR to approve online driver education programs for driving schools. Very good, very good. I'm going to let David read this long one. Wow. Create <laughs> delineation and move laser hair removal professionals to medical esthetician or perhaps create a fourth designation to include training that includes other modalities that many of us already have experience with and perform under a medical director. Interesting. This will help bridge the gap between hair removal and many of the other services performed and will help ensure that individuals handling devices have proper training. These modalities may include IPL, tattoo removal, certain ablative procedures, microneedling, mm -hmm. laser skin rejuvenation, laser and ultrasound skin tightening rejuvenation, also include a provision that licensed medical professionals must undergo specific theory and device training in order to operate the devices. This is someone that really sees the future and they've got some strong opinions on it. Thank you so much. That's great detail. Less inspections with more industries to oversee will lead to more uh, mishaps and unscrupulous companies. Okay? We've got to change that reality from happening. Regulations necessary for post-secondary massage programs. Greater need for speech therapy will occur. People are going to recognize the value of your work. I promise you they will. Speech language, assist, uh, speech language pathology assistance will be better known, yes, and more people will explore SLPA as a career. I remember going to the first conference and seeing, being overwhelmed with nearly 10,000 participants there. And, and the thing that really caught my attention were the students that were either graduating or recently graduated and how much pride they had in this industry. You're absolutely right. People are going to gravitate, gravitate to it. Automated and autonomous vehicles on the roadway. We had that one in the morning session as well. There is no doubt that is going to change our lives in the future and already seen the autonomous vehicles. Sure. Okay. We're going to go, we're going to segue over to what normally is the first question. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we talked about the pandemic. I wanted to make sure that we hit on king or queen for a day. I wanted to make sure that, that you could tell us what you think is going to happen over the five, next five years. This next question is just what are some of the things that we're doing well as an agency? And, and I like how David explains why this question is important to him. So we have a lot on our plate. We've got fuel motor quality that just came to us, a new program with lots of responsibilities. We have 38 other programs that we're doing work on. If you want us to continue doing the good work, 
Let us know what that is. If we're doing customer service well, remind us that we're doing it well, and we don't want to mess that up. If we're doing complaints very well, maybe we do our mailroom uh, communication. Whatever it is that you like about our agency, whether it's I'm very proud of our public relations officer and how they get the message out, what they've been doing to get uh, responses on social media, that's a hard job. we got a lot of people that want answers right away, and that's something that I think we do a pretty good job. But you need to let us know if there's a way to do it better, if there's a way to do these processes better let us know what we're doing right and always what we can do better but what we're doing well we want to keep and, and hold on to it and juggle it keep it juggling keep it up in the air while we got the other balls going on in this hand David appreciates the compliment there's no question that he is dapper and he is the one looking <laughs> good this afternoon Bob Posey comes to mind on this one but <laughs> we'll see <laughs> All right, not so fast, not everybody at once. Yeah, this is one that sparse input is what we typically get. <coughs> Excellent communication coming down from leadership levels. Appreciate that, appreciate that. Facebook's been really working hard, uh, and they just got to commend our team on that. Come on now, tell us something good, as Chaka Khan would say. Tell us something good. What are we doing well? I love me some midwives. Y'all know that. Although we are loud, you are amazing. You bring life into the world. You are response to everyone, even your smallest programs. Midwives, although we're loud, <laughs> responsive. Yes, we do love our midwives. I enjoy the option to be able to submit requests via email. The responses I have been, uh, have been quick and helpful. Laser hair removal division specifically. Great Thank to you. hear. Thank that you for really that. That is really good to hear. Communication via the listserv. Uh, what about individuals uh, who are not on listserv? We've you know, we got to figure out how to reach them. Uh, and that's why David started off this comment saying, hey, if you know somebody who should be in this conversation, let them know. Uh, right now, we've got over a million subscribers to our listserv. It is our most effective way, but we're open to other ways. What's important about that is if you don't like 39 programs worth of materials, you can just click on the ones that you have an interest. Maybe you're an electrician and a mixed martial artist at the same time. You can just click on those two programs. Maybe you just want to know about our commission meetings. You can just sign on for those things. But it is important to stay connected. That's how you find out about these commission advisor boards and t meetings like this. Communication with law enforcement, uh, particularly in the Houston area and IMBs. Uh, man, we are building our, reputa our reputation and our our reserves for handling that, and so we're excited about the relationships. A uh, callback feature for customer service is a nice one. A nice one. I have a great inspector. Outstanding, outstanding. He obviously has a great licensee that's doing their job well too. That's a great relationship. Efficient licensing. Our licensing division appreciates that input. We try to do our best with 39 programs and 1,743 licensees per individual. It, it keeps us busy. So continue online, and I'm assuming with these type of conversations. Uh, so that uh, other professionals uh, can attend. I don't think this genie can go back in the bottle either, y'all. I, I think this is going to be part of, of how we operate in the future. Quick response to the questions. I love email to the CS Mold email. Thank you so much. They're going to appreciate that. They work hard. Appreciate your willingness to take all this feedback and address it. You guys, I'm sorry, not the word guys. Like, <laughs> earlier this morning I used that. Folks, and people. someone said that, that, that they're not all guys, so I appreciate that. And so I'm going to continue to work on that. Y'all are important to us. The social media updates through COVID have been very helpful. You guys have been great. The COVID page is where we're getting out our information. And rem remind you, we're not the repository or the emanating place for all this information. The CDC, the local jurisdictions, the local law enforcement that have some jurisdiction over this stuff, when they let us know what they're doing, we post it on our website. And it, as it affects our programs, we put it on those program pages and the COVID page. FAQs, frequent updates via website and social media. We love you too. I'm looking at my midwives. I love y'all so much. Uh, appreciate this opportunity to communicate. Absolutely. Um, I was worried about having my team come in. In Austin, we, we've got the, the shelter in place, stay at home and work and all that stuff. But it was so important to continue these conversations with you and to be present and let you know that we are still thinking about how can we serve you better even in this moment. This is important, the fact that you showed up this afternoon, and we're gonna get some numbers of how many people and responses, but the fact that you showed up uh, this afternoon means the world to us. Thanks for making the provision for schools that did not have distance learning. That was important, and our education examination division got onto it as quickly as they could. They got with the executive leadership. Thank you for lowering the fees and making it so much easier to renew licenses. That's the combination I like. I like, you know, 
less filling and tastes great. You know, I want to have lower <laughs> fees and greater efficiency. You're That's the yourself. combination uh, that makes me smile when I'm at home thinking about uh, this agency that I have the honor of working with. This meeting is a good start, but maybe break it down into subgroups to make it more relevant to participants. You know, when we travel the state, we go to state to state, we actually break it into smaller programs so we can get that level of detail. We are, we're missing that. Yep. We're trying to bridge the gap. He's a hugger. I actually like meeting people and talking and really engaging with people, and we're missing that. So I appreciate that constructive criticism. We're in a different age trying to do things virtually. We are open to uh, constructive criticism. I think it's a fantastic recommendation. Uh, the regulation of UAPR, we're doing well. Thank you. Uh, that was a great group to bring over and, and be a part of the TLR family, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate what I've learned from them. Your inspectors are courteous to breeders during inspections and are realistic. Man. They would rather educate rather than penalize. You explained two aspects I didn't know were law. Instead of punishing, you educated, and I appreciated it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's the greatest compliment we can hear. Uh, our inspectors have a tough job, uh, but they are on the front lines. They are they're exposed uh, to these situations every day, and, and just to hear that means the world. And that's earning the trust of Texans. That's an awesome, awesome example. Setting the comfort level to access upper-level figures in the top positions. Thank you for hearing us. We greatly appreciate it, the SLP assistance. Y'all are valued. It's just that simple. You are valued. You are important. Um, a willingness to get involved with the industry and not shying away. I will say this about all of our staff, whether it's customer service, licensing, regulatory program management, enforcement, some of the nicest people we never want you to meet. <laughs> They're all willing to take our arrows because we try to, to do our jobs right and we take pride in what we do. So if we're doing something not quite the way you want to see it, we're open to hearing about how we can do better and this is what this is for. Appreciate that you're holding such a great town hall forum. We're going to do some more, y'all. I promise you that. Asking for and being open to our feedback. Your feedback is what makes our agency smarter. Uh, we do the same questions for our staff. They allow us to be smarter, and, and this is just part of the process. As leaders, we are charged with listening and trying to, to improve the processes that we, we've been responsible for. Online license renewal for timely return of new TDR card. Thank you for making it easy to submit online training and file for renewal. Advisory committee members are dedicated to serving on the committee. Please continue announcing when the meetings will be on YouTube. That is part of that list server, that ever important list server. That's what keeps you connected to the industry and those advisory board members, we can go on and on. They work for free. They are volunteers. We at least get paid to do our work, but they come up here and, and, and that's really a case for maybe having the virtual meetings so that they would not have to travel. We're going to have to explore that more because we know it can be done. We've got this going on. We just got to work out some of the Roberts rules and, and public notice yeah. things. We're going to make it happen. IHB, great shout out. They have done an incredible job. Uh, we call it Donna's team because you know, Donna's been there so long, but we're going to make sure that Catherine Vaughn gets the word and, and, and all the folks, Kelly Kelly, that have been working in this process and doing such a great job for us. So thank you for that, that compliment. Laura Hernandez is a huge asset. Look at that. She's one of the department heads I get answers from in a timely manner. We're going to put Laura's uh, home address or <laughs> cell phone number out there shortly. <laughs> Driver education and safety in the house. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We need you here. This is voluntary session. Yes, it is. Uh, we appreciate the willingness and openness. All right, we're going we're gonna to circle back. Do we have some stats? We got some stats we're going to share with you. Uh, I want to circle back to uh, king or queen for a day question. Get those populated quickly. Word cloud? I want to do word cloud on those. I want you all to see because we're going to go through and start summarizing some of the trends that we've seen from you. So remember the word cloud, the way it works is that the, the most often repeated terms um, are, are the ones that have a larger font. So I'll let David give an update on the numbers first. We'll start from the lower, the, what does TDR do well? And that's usually the lowest numbers of all of these. We've got 43 responses received. Mm, my and mother the, is typing away. The next highest <laughs> is Five years, what's going to be the crystal ball you see happening to the industry in five years? We have 50 responses. That's good. For the pandemic question, the very first question we went through, it was 68 responses. And the top response getter is king or queen for a day, and we still have time for more, is 98. I just was informed that the governor may be on, so we may be losing some ratings. We need to get this stuff in here pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, so when you look at king or queen for a day, the things that are highlighted there, obviously, is cosmetology, the hours. Uh, looking at the speech language uh, program, 
allowing the students, allowing the massage program. When you see that word allow, it's modifying a lot of things. Uh, towing and VSF, VSF Form 11 should be on there. There it is down there at the bottom. Uh, the education, looking at the practical examination. We heard several iterations of that. Do away with the practical. Allow the practical to be given at the, given at the schools. Uh, fantastic, good information. Uh, changing, going back to 1,500 hours uh, from the, the legislative changes that just took place uh, for the cosmetology program. Uh, targeting unlicensed activity. It's got to be frustrating as beep heck. <laughs> it's got to be frustrating as heck for you to put in the work and, and the time, the education, and the insurance of building a business, and then these, as they were referred to earlier, these bootleggers just come around and they just start doing the work without uh, putting in the effort. Unlicensed we activities are, up there addressing that bootleggers. We have teletherapy, which was prevalent throughout the morning and afternoon absolutely. sessions. Absolutely. What else do you have, Dave? What else do you see up there? Let's see. We've got field time, making midwives. I think you covered most of the bigger ones. We've got testing over here. There was a lot of stuff on, on the examination, the practical examination and testing. The 1,500 hours stands out to me because that's so fresh on our mind. Keeping it or going back to what we had before. This is good. This is a good board. Let's take a quick look at the, uh, the pandemic um, word cloud. Teletherapy, huge. Allow speech. We're not going to forget that. Students. Allow speech. Teletherapy. Look how large that is. The students, uh, the language, uh, essential versus non-essential. Essential. That one's up there. That one comes out, yes. Quite a bit. Uh, cosmetologist. Um, Online. Online. Which is going to be our world, you know. I mean, we, we are moving into that online environment. The new responders. Uh, the, the COVID responders are the folks that are working at restaurants, uh, the people that are delivering our food uh, through the different uh, Uber services and Uber Eats and DoorDash. Man, the world has changed so quickly. We got to change what then we will. What else do you see up there, Dave? Training. Essential. Pandemics in the future. This is about pandemics in the future. So home is going to be an important part. People actually working from home. One of the things that when I look at up in the top right corner for me, uh, the distance and how large Texas is and then how that distance has shrunk through online. That's what brings our, that, that's what shrinks the geography of Texas by using uh, the online services that are, that are available, the platform. So that's a great one. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what we're doing well, which is I think David looking uh, mighty strikingly <laughs> handsome this afternoon. During the next five years, what is TDR doing well? Thanks, and we're giving thanks as well for y'all's participation and allowing us to engage this way. We're, again, we're used to traveling the state and talking and hearing the stories. It's a little bit more difficult to hear the stories when we're getting it up on text on the boards, but you're still participating and sharing with us, and so it makes us still feel connected. Thank you for the participation. It's great. Uh, it's humbling, and on behalf of all of our employees, we accept that thank you with a lot of gratitude uh, and with the promise that we're going to be better tomorrow than we were today, uh, that we are all working through this COVID moment. Uh, but these ideas and your willingness uh, to continue to trust us uh, means a lot uh, that, that we're here. And, and yes, the agency is going to be, continue to be open for business and continue to serve you. We're going to go back to uh, the king or queen for a day question and see if we can get maybe 10 more ideas before we head out with our face mask and, and get back to our families. <laughs> it's going to take a little while to populate, so if you're still thinking of some ideas regarding king or queen for a day, or you want to build on a previous idea, now's the time to do it. King or queen for a day. And while that's populated, I want to thank uh, Michael Fickle, uh, our IT person that's taking care of the cameras and, and making sure that, that I look skinnier than what I really do in real life. Uh, it's been fantastic. It's really been good. David wanted to play Shaka Khan's Tell Me Something Good uh, during this session. I decided just to make a reference. Just, just Yeah, you did good. You did good. <laughs> so we'll let this populate, and then we'll just we'll wrap up with the last few king or queen for a day recommendations, because this is 
This is the heart of strategic planning today. The meat of it is what's going to happen in the next five years. But the heart of it is, man, what are those priority issues? Uh, as Randy Nesbitt says in our, our um, innovation office and transformation office, he talks about what are the pain points? Where are we creating pain in the way that you, you impact and interact with us? Our customer service division, specifically, the voice of the customer comes up in daily conversations. They take that to heart. Our customer service division and our license division, that voice of the customer really means something. So we're trying to identify pain points that y'all are feeling. Not that's necessarily going to make our jobs easier, but trying to figure out where are y'all struggling, what's, what issues are we causing with our processes, and we need to hear in the king or queen for a day what we can fix. And we've heard some of that today. So you should be typing, and by the time we get to the top, we'll be able to read those. More sanitation for barbers and go back to 1,500 hours. The VSF-11 form, I like that they know their forms. Oh, yeah. uh, anybody that knows their forms for their, knows their program. <laughs> I think they would call it a pain point. <laughs> I think they would definitely refer to it as a pain point. Hiring more staff to investigate and act on unlicensed workers. David, now, can we keep this open for another 10 minutes, even though we can shut down the... Uh... Sure. Okay. That's what we're going to do. We're, we're, going to, um, we're going to wrap up with some thank yous for being a part of this process. It means a lot. Uh, the next steps are, as we've done before, everything you shared with us, we're going to put on the webpage. This is your information. Uh, that's part of us being transparent and open as we share the information that you provide to us. But what we're going to do is we're going to keep, if you're a king or queen for a day, that question open up another 10 minutes. Uh, but on behalf of the agency, and I'll let David have the last words, but on behalf of the agency, uh, I'm just humbled and grateful that you chose to spend some time with us and share some great ideas with us. Uh, we're going to try to be the best agency that we can be for you. Thank you for the professionalism the constructive input. These are not ideas that will be taken lightly, so thank you very much for the time spent. This is something that we're going to be able to do something with, and have shown we've got a track record of taking this information, going to the legislature with the plans that you've given to us, and saying, hey, this is what our customers are telling us, hopefully earning your trust that we are going to be representing y'all's best interests. Thank you for participating today. Thank you all very much.